from the Department of Justice lawsuit on NVIDIA today to the NASDAQ crashing down 3% while Philip Morris and BTI make multi-year highs. SMCI was in a 40-point range. Netflix dropped 40 points after taking out a new high. Socks completely collapses on multi-year selling. We have a lot to go over. Let's just get into it. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to just start with the basics. A lot to go over. There's one trade in particular, and I want to show you what's working because there are things that are working and there are things that are not working. And it's really important in this kind of environment to learn the difference, especially with the way that this is going and the way the trading is developing. So first and foremost, this is the ES. And what we're going to look at is just the volume. So just start here with today. Realize it's your back to school, back from Labor Day party, yay, and what's going on. You're above every single level that I have. These are all moving averages or some level of standard deviation on how I measure volume. Your selling is above all of them, but it's not extreme selling, which is pretty much the worst thing. And I'll explain why. Because what it's telling you is, yes, it can get worse because you're not in extreme levels and you're just starting. If you ever look at these levels, it's very rare for me to get a move down like that and not have a follow through day with it. Could it happen? Sure, it absolutely can happen. It's pretty rare. If I go through these days and look at them together, once I have that, I usually string together a couple days. Now, if I go back through this and we just go to 24 so we don't waste a lot of time and just take a look, we'll go from there over. And where, how many times have we been here? Here where there's two in a row, two in a row, and what's followed. So this is one of the top, I would say, 10 worst days on volume that you had out there. The question is what happens tomorrow? And we're already seeing signs of that after hours on probably how this is gonna play out. And it's something that we're gonna take a look at and get to. But I do think it's really important for us to know this. Uh, because to me, it's setting it's setting up for the future here on, on what we're dealing with, which is obviously uh, more selling after today. And there's a couple reasons for that. But I don't know that we're going to get into all the fundamental reasons, but we may address a couple of them. Now, one of the things floating around there was that it was China manufacturing. And I'm just going to point this out. China manufacturing came in. Here's the headline. Here's new orders. And here's output. Uh, nothing here on China manufacturing was out of whack. Now, if it was not above expectations, or they're looking at the output dropping so precipitously, maybe that is what they're looking at. But the numbers came in line. The only thing that I'm wondering is that is the output dropping so fast that that's what did it. And that might be one of the clues. And I'll show you what I mean by this. Now, if we connect the dots, if you don't have output, you don't need copper. And if you don't need copper, copper's going to sell off. You can see copper. This is copper futures. We got right to the 55 and we rejected just like we did here. So if we look at that and we see copper getting weak, if output was worse than expected, even though according to, to all the numbers, you're above 50 as I just showed you, it still came in pretty hard here and dropping like that, that's going to cause semis to sell off. And then it became a self-fulfilling prophecy where people got out of the way. There was nothing in our personal data today that was out of whack. Now, if we look at our personal data in the US here, ISM manufacturing 47.2 versus 47.5, global manufacturing 47.9 versus 48. Again, there's nothing really here that's telling us, hey, we need to panic. Construction spending, not really one of those top rip numbers that you're gonna look at, but anything here, new orders, ISM manufacturing, if we were looking for something and we wanted to have a problem, we could say ISM manufacturing new orders could be that issue. And then you look at the bond market, but there was no panic to buy bonds in the bond market. Uh, the one year got a little better than we've seen in the past, but is there something here that really stood out? And the answer is nothing too crazy. Now, these are the last Septembers, 2020, five, four, five, nine, five. Okay, they're always down. Now, the thing about now that we have to deal with is if you look at this versus an election year, and I'm not going to get into it all, September and October are the worst. The problem that you're running into now is that no matter what side of the aisle you're on, you have 50 50. So you have this level here that people are looking at where they're saying, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, we just don't know who's going to win this thing. And based upon that, we just don't want to go near it. That's kind of happening right now where you're seeing people sit on the sidelines saying, we're not sure which way to go. We kind of were before, but we're not sure which way to go. So you're seeing them step off the gas and saying, we need to see who wins. That's going to add to this. And that's what you're seeing today. Now, there was some news that came out today. Uh, and to me, the news was not great on a couple names. And I'm going to address this. I'm interested in your comments below. But some of this news, it, it really just parts of it made no sense. Let's get into it. Now, there are certain signs that I look at at the market after doing this 25 years 
that just give me pause. This is one of them, and not because it didn't work and it was my trade. But when I have this kind of pattern up here, I'll show you it. And if you've been watching this for years, you've watched me do this pattern over and over again. And you can see how many times I've actually missed on it. It's not many. This is basically a dragonfly where the open and close is at the high of the bar at the top of a chart. And that's after testing the 12, all right? You're at the top of a chart, you have above average volume, you went over and you completely reversed and sold down hard. When this kind of thing happens, okay, that is something that I refer to as gives me pause. Now, what I do is I honor my process. Sadly, when trades don't work, this is where people get slaughtered in markets like this. And I don't mean just, oh, they lost money. I mean slaughtered because they'll say to themselves, it's going to come back and that's not a process. You need a process. I'm going to show you one in a second here. So tries to rally, goes up. I was up. I was a king for about two minutes. And then my dreams, hopes and dreams were smashed. Tries to rally. All right, that's it. I just start scaling out. And then it's then my dreams are dead. Okay. The idea of holding this, right, would have been the equivalent of losing another $25. So what was the right move, right? And you would say, well, how do you know it's going to happen? The bottom line is no one ever knows what's going to happen. Here's my point. They set you up. And I don't care if you believe that or not, but they do that. These algorithms and high frequency traders know what they have to trigger and they know when to trigger it. Now, once again, these kinds of things you need to be careful of. Here was other signs of this to me. Watch now. See how you got over and then it reversed. Okay. New all time highs. IGV looks great. They reversed this. These are day one moves, usually meaning there's something way more behind it. That's a bear, right? Engulfing right there. We all know what that is. Please understand this. When you see these kinds of moves, you want to pay attention to them, okay? This usually means change in trend to some extent. And I think that there's too many factors out there that people are concerned. A lot of people are starting to chatter about non-farm payrolls being significantly worse than expected. But what's really important about this is when you have reversal patterns at the top of a chart, you need to be aware of that. And that's before we even get into any of the news that's out there. But stuff like this, please pay attention to. Now, let's just start with some of the news that I think is pertinent. Number one, you had SMCI today. Now, SMCI had a bunch of news out over the weekend. They're being sued. You knew that was going to happen, the class action lawsuits. It was a matter of time, even though there's no wrongdoing or anything. They don't care. They're just going to file a class action lawsuit and you're going to get your $1.37 in the mail. But what's important about this is not only did the stock blow it off, but there was a comment and the comment by SMCI have gone over already, but what they said on Friday was non-material adjustments to the 10K when they file it. That's a really bold statement to make, a very bold statement to make. And that statement's gonna overshadow a lot of things. And what I wanna point out here on SMCI, I did not take out the lows. I, I wanna be really clear about that. You did not take out the lows. One of the things I love doing with trades like this is just measure where you were from the open to the close. Now, at the end of the day, you couldn't get over the 50, which does mean, yeah, you probably have some kind of, you know, I would say weight on your shoulders there, right? But at the end of the day, is that the end of the world here? Probably not. But I would be really careful of being on the wrong side of this right now until you see more news. For us, it was a no-brainer. I knew that the class action lawsuit stuff is just, it's immaterial. They do it all the time. Um, I mean, I think it's like once a week or once a month for something like Apple. But once you saw this and you saw the left, this was a very easy trade and all your levels were marked off because you could see what the pre and the post was and you knew where you closed. A matter of fact, if you take a real close look at that and you look at that 930 level and you come straight across, you can see what we saw. And once you push through, it gave you a really good entry. And this is a great example of understanding a fundamental catalyst that was out there, which was SMCI statement, whether you agree with it, believe it or not, doesn't matter. The street believes it, right? The street acted. This name is a tech name. It did not take out a low. Clearly, people believe what they're saying or this thing would have gotten smoked today, and it did not. Here, watch us play this live. I'm not buying that dip. Let's see what this does. I would think that you're going to go higher here. I'm going to buy some SMCI here. It's not going to cost me much. There it goes. There we go. But that forms, I can just use that low. I'm in at 34. Let's see what it does here. Yep. So now I'm up, what, about five? All right. Sold a portion, leaving the rest on. And I'll just use low a day, I think, maybe. There goes SMCI. I'm just holding the rest of it. Up 10, trimmed. SMCI, I don't see any reason for me to do anything else with this. We bought the open. I'm in at, what, 34.91 up $15. There's literally nothing for me to do. Right into that. Yay. Up 20. I sell any? I think we do. Don't we? We're up 20 points in a day. Well, we were up 18 points. What are you going to do? So there's your level and you're holding there. I trimmed into this. How about none for now? All right. I'm locking in the SMCI trade. I'm up a lot in it. I'm just going to lock it in. Now, the purpose of me showing that is twofold. Number one, 
That's how fast you need to be in this market. And what I want to point out is just something here. You can see the market here at 10 o'clock and when we turned. This is right when the top really started forming on the market as a whole. And what happened right around there were those new orders for us. So are the new orders really the issue? And I don't have a question to that or an answer to that, right? It's just out there for you to look into. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you how you should think. I hope that I hope you understand the difference in that. But let's go and take a look at this. So if we go and take a look at the cues. How did the cues act at that particular time, right? Um, it, it didn't matter to them, did it? It was just straight down. Okay, how about the SPY? Did that matter at all to the SPY? No. Okay, was there any data that came out today that we released that did anything to the market besides sell it straight down? The resounding answer is no. Therefore, we have to go on the conclusion that it was just outright selling based upon what happened either overseas or the idea that they want to deregulate based upon what's coming up, going into non-farm payrolls for whatever reason. They, they want to just de-risk is a better way to say it than deregulate. So what, where does this leave us with the spy and where does this leave us with, with what to do? Well, you've got a couple other great Brainiac ideas going on out there that we're going to get into. Number one Brainiac idea of the day, Apple with this statement now. Apple is launching a new family of phones September 9th. Apple continues to dominate the space. There was a line here. Let me see if I can find it on this one particularly. So there was a lot of chatter that came out about Apple today about discontinuing models. And there was also this, Apple to switch to new displays for all AI phones next year. They'll use organic light admitting diode displays for all new phones from the model sold from 2025 on, uh, marking the end of the liquid crystal displays. So there's a couple things that they're doing here. One, they had a statement today that they are getting rid of, after 16, they are getting rid of the 15, 14, 13. That's, people are saying, oh, they always do that. They don't always do that. And it's a concern. And they're switching to this AI and they're switching to the display. I can tell you from a fundamental standpoint looking at this, and there's some more articles that you can go and read on this issue. Um, this is a real problem, and I'm gonna explain why it's an issue. Specifically, not only changing the displays, but also changing and getting rid of these other models as they go into AI. Anybody that's out there that's in this company looked at this and mapped this thing out, and this is what they said when they were buying the whole way up. Apple's gonna do X in revenue no matter what. And then they're going to have this new product out. Remember, iPhone sales are over 42%, 43%. And no matter what happens, I've got these earnings to rely on. Even if they come out with Vision Pro, right, which was an absolute dud and just like, you know, a really great way to signal to a girl that you don't want to date. Um, but even with that, nobody cared because they're like, oh, no, we have these iPhone sales, so they're great. Okay, good. Now what happens? Well, now they're saying we're getting rid of 15, 14, 13, and we're switching our displays. So every analyst that's out there, forget about sell side, which is the JP Morgans and the Goldmans. They're going to come out and tell you how great it is. Every analyst that's out there right now is going to look at this and go, yeah, this could be an issue. Now, when I say analyst, I mean buy side analysts. I mean the guys that work at Third Point that have been building this huge position in Apple. Okay, all of a sudden, Buffett's going to start looking like a genius here. But the idea that they're transferring into a new display, everyone that loves Apple is going to tell me it's no big deal. It's a big deal or they wouldn't be talking about it. Okay, this does not have one day down. This is I need to get out of the position. I need to reevaluate what I'm doing here. Do I want to be an Apple? Do I not want to be an Apple? Do I want to wait to September 9th? to see the date. The game changed with Apple today and you're sitting right at a 55 day moving average and you're gonna to wanna to watch how that goes tomorrow. This could be a real issue for Apple and it could be a real stumbling block for them and it could be an open door for somebody to come in and start saying, hey, you know what, the green bubble's not so bad. Uh, candidly, at the time of recording this, I have a short position in Apple and I also have some puts. Now, this is where it gets interesting and this is an overhang for NVIDIA. As much as I like NVIDIA and I like the stock, this is a huge overhang for the name. Justice Department subpoenas NVIDIA over antitrust concerns. Okay, they're clearly, ramping up for something. They're just not doing this on purpose, like just to do it. The P Department of Justice subpoenaed NVIDIA and other companies seek evidence chipmaker violated antitrust laws, according to the report from Bloomberg. DOJ previously sent questionnaires to the companies making the subpoenas and escalation of the government inquiry. Antitrust officials are concerned NVIDIA is making it harder for customers to switch to other suppliers, penalizing buyers that don't exclusively use its AI chips, according to unnamed sources. So this is them putting pressure on NVIDIA for whatever reason, we can come up with a litany of reasons why the Justice Department would do this. I'm not going to put the tinfoil hat on, but the bottom line is 
this is gonna be a weight on the name. Uh, it's gonna be out there and people are gonna wonder what's gonna happen here. And they're not gonna see an impetus. They didn't see an impetus to buy it before. You certainly don't have one now. This is coming from somebody that likes it a lot. So where does that put us? There's a couple key levels that I would watch here. Number one that I would look at is, can you get down to this 88? Yeah, you can. This can get a lot worse than you think it can. Uh, I wanna just be really clear about that. When people want out, they don't look at the PE and go, you know what, I'm not gonna sell that because of the PE. They just get out. For us to have another down day, I don't think it's unrealistic for you to have another down day like this. I, I truly don't, to come down to some major support, see if you can hold it. That's the 200, if we played around with this, and just said, okay, where's the 100, where's the 150? And again, before I forget, if you are on the wait list to get into the community, there's the 150 and you're right at, right around that 100, which kind of looks like that might make the most sense. Let's go take a look at the 100, see where we're at there. Uh, please be on the lookout. Today you broke the 100, it's not good. That's not good. I've seen good before, it doesn't look like that. So if you're on the wait list, look for a letter. Uh, it will go out tonight, there's only two days left. If you're not on the wait list, get on there because then I do close the community. I know it's not a sales pitch. I actually do close the community because I speak to every single person that joins or give them the opportunity to. So it's an actual community. So just please be on the lookout for that letter. Uh, I think there's 48 hours later to join if you are on the wait list. So now you have this move down and then that ties us in with everything else we went to and go, okay, well, where's the money going? So the one thing we always wanna look at to determine where the money's going is we're just going to take a look at the basics. Now, what do I mean by looking at the basics? We look at the sectors, and we covered a lot here, and there's a lot of this you're gonna to wanna to go listen to again, but you look at the sectors, and then you go through this, and then all you do is just go back to 9.30. So I have 40 sectors that I put in here, and anybody can create this. I actually think I have this on TradingView for people to look at. Just follow me on TradingView. Uh, and then you just kind of go through them and go, okay, well, where, where are we at and what's going on? And you kind of look through this and go, okay, XLU, XLV, what does that mean? Well, it tells you what they're buying. I left the video in there so you can see how disgusting it is. Uh, but here's XLU, XLV, IHI. Okay, it tells you exactly where the money's going, financials. And then if you look today, that's exactly what happened. And I think that's a really important distinction for us to get. Like, okay, what went higher today? XLU went higher today. Why? They're buying defensives and they're buying yield. So you, we would be looking at names like UTSI. We're looking at names like Philip Mar Morris, Ultra. These are names that we bought in the community. We've, we're up... And I know I, I was teasing them today, like, you know, I know these names aren't sexy, but some of these names, they just don't care. FTAI cared. Anything industrial just came down today because people are concerned about the economy. But how about Philip Morris? Did that come down today? No. How about BTI? No, they're buying, they're clearly buying yield, right? You can see that they are buying yield. Eventually, the XLRE names will catch on as well. It's just going to be a question of which ones are going to go. That's it.